Alright everyone, today we've got not one, not two, but three awesome must try builds just for you. Finishers are all about flair and showboating, but now I'm going to show you how there is a hugely powerful and effective build in the game which will allow you to use them to their highest potential. So if that's what you want and you're new here, then please hit subscribe. And whilst you're there, give this video a rating too, if you go on to enjoy it. But without any more delay, let's get into the build. Now this build all centers around three new exotics with one for each class. If you followed the channel closely, you'll have an idea what they are. But for a quick reference, we've got Felwinter's Helm, Assassin's Cowl, and Severance Enclosure. There's a whole load of funky stuff you can do with these exotics, ranging from unlimited invisibility to creating Warmind Cells. But for today's video, we are doubling down on their main intrinsic perks, paired with Charge with Light mods, and creating the ultimate finisher build. And to do that, we are starting off with Felwinter's Helm and the ever trusty Warlock. This exotic Warlock helmet is pretty insane to be honest, and it effectively gives you an even better souped up version of what the Oppressive Darkness Seasonal mod does. Warlord's End is the intrinsic perk, and it will cause final blows from charged melees to create a burst of energy, which adds a weakened effect to nearby enemies. Finishers and final blows against powerful enemies increase the radius of the burst, and the length of the weakening effect. The effect is hugely noticeable, with enemies covered in a colourful hue to show they are debuffed by Felwinter's Helm. Melees give the lowest effect to this, with it only covering a small area and lasting for a couple of seconds. But this build is all about finishers, and these give the greatest effect when used on majors and yellow bar enemies, which will impact enemies over a large area and last for an entire age. Not only that, but enemies get disorientated briefly too, which can be very helpful to stop aggro and allow you to pick them apart. So that's the exotic setup sorted for now, so let's look at the mods we are going to be picking to make this a true finisher build. Now there's a ton of basic finisher mods available, but we're actually starting off with a non-finisher mod, and this one is mainly to help with the finisher setup because in order to perform a finisher, you will often be running through adds and taking incoming damage. So to counteract that and give us some survivability and a chance to execute that finisher, you'll want the Striking Light mod. This Dawn Armor mod costs 5 Arc Energy and is another double perk mod. Its main perk will spawn an orb of light for allies when you defeat opponents with melees or swords, whilst you are charged with light. This is what it is, and it isn't anything special. But it's the second perk, which is active when another arc mod is placed in the armour, and it will grant the perk uncatchable. With this, you'll gain damage resistance against opponents while sprinting. This is active at all times while sprinting, and isn't overly noticeable, but it definitely works, and is kind of the linchpin of this build. This is why I love the current mod system, it's just so simple and offers such great benefits, yet I reckon hardly anybody uses this mod and it's perfect in even a simple form for shotgun apes, but I digress. So the next two mods here are basic finisher mods, and the first one is healthy finisher. This is a class item specific mod and costs 1 void energy. Performing a finisher will heal you and this costs 1 tenth of your super. Given that you'll be up close and personal, getting health back at the cost of a small amount of super energy is definitely beneficial, and will allow you to tank even further damage from anybody not impacted by Felwinter's Helm debuff. The next mod we have got is Empowered Finish. This neutral mod costs 1 energy and it will allow you to become charged with light by finishing an opponent. This costs 1 tenth of your super. Now you want to become charged with light to take advantage of the final mod in this warlock build, Reactive Pulse. This arrival's armor mod costs 3 arc energy and also has a dual perk. Its main perk is active when you are charged with light, so that when you take damage when surrounded by enemies, you will emit a burst of damaging arc energy, which consumes one stack of charge with light. 
This is handy and definitely useful, and you might as well make the most of it seeing as so we are using finishers as often as possible. It won't wipe out high health enemies, but it will definitely get rid of trash ads and red bars with ease. However, its secondary perk is Bulwark Finisher. This is also a neutral energy mod by itself, but that comes with a huge super penalty reduction. But with it in this mod, it doesn't cost anything to use, but it will still grant you a powerful overshield whilst performing a finisher. This can be the difference between surviving a finisher or failing miserably, especially when trying to get that finisher off in the middle of group of blockers in Gambit. All these mods allow you to go from finisher to finisher with ease, debuffing enemies allowing you to get max damage with your DPS weapon of choice. You might want to also consider putting in Oppressive Darkness too, but be mindful that this doesn't stack with Felwinter's Helm's debuff, so make sure to keep that one in hand for specific targeted boss damage phases as required, and this mod will always be recommended in builds to be honest. But that's not it, that's just the Warlock side of the build. For Hunters and Titans, we will be mainly using the same mods apart from one which we will change especially in the Hunter build. So first, we'll go with the Titans Severance Enclosure. We'll be putting in exactly the same mods here for the Warlock setup, so let's take a quick look at the Spiromatic Trigger perk. It essentially works the same as Felwinter's Helm, but instead of debuffing enemies, you'll cause an explosion which will increase in radius and impact the higher the level of opponent. Again, finishers are your friend here and will cause the maximum amount of impact with the least amount of effort. Finally, the Hunter build and Assassin's Cowl. A very underrated, underused but highly effective exotic helmet. Vanishing Execution is the intrinsic perk and again it works exactly the same as the Warlock and Titan variants, but melees and finishers will grant invisibility and restore a portion of your shields and health. Now this is where we will swap out the healthy finisher mod, seeing as so health regen is intrinsic to this exotic, so we're going to pop in the Lucent Blade mod. This arrivals mod costs 4 arc energy and gives a huge buff to sword damage whilst charged with light. Also, if you have the secondary perk Replenishing Blade active, you will greatly increase the recharge rate of your equipped sword, allowing you to use the heavy attack more often. Plus, if you pair this with a Void Night Stalker's Hunter build and Oppressive Darkness, you'll be able to sneak up on your opponents unnoticed and get some top tier damage output. Remember, you can always fall back on melees in these builds to take advantage of the exotic perks so strength mods and high stat armour will be beneficial, as well as considering the exotic auto rifle Monte Carlo to return melee energy too. However, I've gone for the more open ended Breach Resonator, where final blows with barrier piercing weapons will grant both grenade and melee energy, which will free up an exotic slot for something like Wither Horde or Runus Effigy. Finishers are all about flair and showboating, but now with this build, they are also highly effective and will work in end game content as a great neutral game option. These exotics are great for adding a different dynamic to your gameplay, not only benefit you, but your fire team too. Like I mentioned, there are some other neutral finisher mods, so have a look at what you want and mix them up as you wish, whether you want more ammo or even extra glimmer thanks to the artifact finisher mod. So there we go, a very extraordinary look at how you can use finishers as your main offensive weapon in Destiny 2, causing destruction never looks so good. Let me know in the comments section below if you enjoy using finishers and if there's any finishers you'd like to see introduced. Once again, if you've made it this far, thank you very much. I appreciate you taking your time to listen to my crazy ideas and builds. If you're new here though and found this build helpful then please hit subscribe, it's a free and easy way to support the channel and will allow you to stay up to date with all the latest builds. A rating down below too is always greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.